The swap space is a hard disk space. We can use a partition or a file to create the swap space. If the hard disk has unpartitioned space, we can make a new partition and use it as the swap space. To view a list of all attached hard disks and their layout, we can use the lsblk command with the L option. As we can see here, this disk has no partitions. We can use it to create a new partition for the swap space. Linux uses swap space to deal with the shortage of RAM. To view the current usage of RAM, we can use the free command. If the swap space is available, Linux assigns a threshold value to RAM. It moves ideal processes data from RAM to the swap space when RAM usage crosses the threshold value. Until the RAM usage remains under the threshold value, Linux does not use the swap space. Linux includes many native tools to create and manage partitions. You can choose any one you prefer. In this video, I will use the gdisk command. The gdisk command needs the disk path as an argument. It allows us to create, update, and delete partitions on the specified disk. The gdisk command starts on a subshell. On the subshell, it uses its commands to manage the specified disk. The p command prints the current disk layout. As we can see here, this disk has no partitions. To create a new partition, we use the n command. The command automatically picks the first available sector to start the new partition. We can specify the ending sector or a size in standard units. If we provide the size in a standard unit, it calculates the ending sector from the size and uses that. By default, it creates a standard Linux partition. To make a swap partition, we need to change the partition type. The L command lists all supported partition types with their hexacodes. The partition type of swap is 8200. We can use the P command again to verify the new partition. By default, the gdisk command keeps all changes in memory. We use the W command to apply the changes. We can use the lsblk command again to verify the new partition. Before we use this partition for the swap space, we need to format it. The mkswap command formats the partition and creates a swap signature. Linux uses the swap signature to identify the swap partitions and files. Before we activate this partition for the swap space, let's check the currently allocated swap space. Now let's activate the partition we created for the swap space. We use the swap on command to activate a new partition or file for the swap space. Now let's check the allocated swap space again. As we can see here, the size of the allocated swap space has increased by 1 GB. It verifies the new swap partition space has successfully merged with the existing swap space. The newly activated swap space will remain available only in the current session. If we restart the system, Linux will not activate it. Linux uses the slash etc slash fs tab file to save partitions information. It reads this file at the boot time to mount partitions. If we want to mount a partition permanently, we must create an entry for that partition in this file. Before we add a new entry to this file, let us take a backup of the existing file. Now let's open the file. This file contains entries and lines. We will add the new entry after the last line. Each entry or line has six fields. The first field is the absolute path of the partition we want to mount. The second field is the name or label of the partition. You can leave this field blank or use the value none. The third field is the file system type. The fourth field is the mount options. We can use default options. The dump command checks the fifth field's value to determine whether it should dump the mounted partition at the boot time. The fsck command checks the sixth field's value to determine whether it should check and repair the mounted partition at the boot time. Save the file and restart the system. As we know, Linux reads the slash etc slash fs tab file at the boot time to mount partitions and file system. If Linux fails to mount a partition specified in this file, it halts the boot process. If the system boots without errors, it verifies all partitions listed in this file have mounted successfully. We can also verify the mounted partitions after the login. The initial swap space on this system was 3 GB. We extended it by 1 GB. As we can see here, the swap space size has been increased. It verifies the swap partition we made. If we want to remove the swap partition we made, first, we have to remove its entry from the slash etc slash fs tab file. Since we took the backup of this file before adding the swap partitions entry, we can restore the original copy from the backup. Removing the fs tab entry does not delete the partition we made. We can delete a partition only from the disk management utility. We can not delete an active swap partition. The swap off command deactivates the specified swap partition. After deactivating it, we can use the gdisk command to delete it. To delete a partition, we need its partition number. 
we can use the print command to list partitions. We use the D command to delete a partition. Print the disk layout again to verify the delete operation. Save the change and quit the G disk. The kernel will not read the new partition layout until we restart the system. If the FS tab file contains any wrong entry or Linux fails to mount any partition listed in this file, it halts the boot process. If the system boots normally, it verifies the swap partition has been removed. Since we have removed the swap partition, the swap space should be restored to its original size. As we can see here, the swap space has been restored to its original size. It verifies the swap partition has been removed. We can create a swap partition only when we have unpartitioned disk space. If unpartitioned disk space is not available and we need to increase the swap space, we can use a file as the swap space. Since Linux uses the swap space to save temporary memory pages, we can't use a data file for the swap space. The file we want to use for the swap space must not contain meaningful data. In addition to it, the size of the file also needs to be equal to the size we want to add to the existing swap space. We can use the dd command to create a text file having only raw data of a particular size. We can use the df command with the h option to view the available space on all partitions. As we can see here, this partition has sufficient free space. We can use it to create the swap file. The dd command needs four arguments, source, destination, count, and block size. It copies data in the specified block size from the source and pastes it on the destination as many times as we specify in the count argument. For example, this command copies 1 megabit data from the zero device and pastes it 1000 times in this file. The zero device supplies infinite numbers of zero. We can use the du command to verify the file size. As mentioned earlier, Linux uses a partition or a file for the swap space when it has the swap signature. To use this file for the swap space, we need to create the swap signature on this file. After creating the swap signature, we can use the swap on command to activate the newly created file as the swap space. The default file permission is 0644. It allows the group users and all other users to read and execute the file contents. Since only the system uses the swap file the mkswap command suggests using 0600 permission. The 0600 permission allows only owner to read and write. Change permission to 0600. We can use the free command to verify the new swap space. If we want to remove the space file from the swap pool, first, we have to turn off the swap flag. After deactivating the swap flag, we can delete this file. We can use the df command before and after the delete operation to verify the delete operation. That's all for this video. If you have any suggestions, comments, or feedback about this video, please share them in the comment section given below.